Hello and welcome to ULPLM. Universal Light, Pure Love Ministries. And today we have Maya. You have to pronounce your last name, Maya. <laughs> Sadarangani. <laughs> Sadarangani. Okay, yeah. there we go. And she is uh, Wiccan. Are you a priestess? Yes, I am. I'm Celtic. Celtic. Um, I was, yeah, I was raised in the Celtic tradition. So, yeah. All right. I was and you are. A long time ago. In my so. Story. And I know I've given you I've given you a couple of readings, so and I know you amazing. a little bit a little bit about you. I know you're very spiritual, very powerful. Uh, thank you, thank you. A very strong you are, affinity. You are too. <laughs> thank you. A very strong affinity to dragons. I noticed yes. you use that within you know your magic. Uh, so how did you come into this? Is this something that uh, you were kind of just grew up grew up with, or something that you learned later in life? Yeah. Um... I mean, the story is from a very young age, I kind of knew, um, but didn't know. You know, it's one of those things when you're born, you have these powerful feelings and you express them, not yeah. knowing that's who you already are. So right. at the age of four, I was saying, mom, I want to be a witch. <laughs> so <laughs> it was just, and she thought it was cute and funny and you know, and, you know, I remember I was an only child for like 12 years. Then my mom like popped out three more. But um, but I, I remember as a very young child, you know, sitting in my bed and just being really enthralled by vamp old vampire movies, any supernatural movies, anything that was really like, you know, in that genre, the old black and white vampire movies, especially like. I was just glued. <laughs> it just, it was just <laughs> something. And anything that was supernatural, I really loved and was drawn to. And I remember one of my mom's friends buying me like a game. And it was called Witch Witch. It's a really old game. Um, wow. And it was like a 3D thing that you built with cardboard. They had rooms and you walked the witch through the rooms and there were little booby traps. And it was my favorite game. So it just continued, you know, on as I got older and wanted to find out more about it because I was, the pull was so strong right. that I felt like I need to find out if this is good or if it's bad because I really didn't know. Hollywood yeah. had portrayed witches in a certain way and that's what I was used to seeing. But right. I said, how could it be bad if I'm so drawn to it? Because I knew as a person, I was a good person, you know, right. um, I didn't want to cause harm on anyone. So I went to the library because I didn't have any other resources at the time because I am a bit older. We didn't have, you know, internet. We didn't have even any real, I mean, there were shops, I'm sure, but they were mostly in the major cities and not anywhere near where I lived. So um, I went to the library and looked up witches for like hours and my, I came home and my mom was like, and I think I was like nine or 10. I came home and she's like, where were you? And I said, I was at the library. She's like, don't lie to me. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to tell her while I was looking up witches. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that's what I was doing. And so I even borrowed my girlfriend's, my best friend's mom had um, a beautiful velvet cape that she had worn as a Halloween costume and it was in her closet and I found it and I was like obsessed with it. <laughs> and I would walk, I'd walk around my neighborhood at like the age of 12 telling all the kids in the neighborhood that I was a witch with this cape on, you know, like it was, just, <laughs> it was just something that I was just, I just thought it was the best thing ever, you know, especially when I found out that, you know, when I did the research and I found out it was a religion, it is a positive religion. Um, so I just, you know, and, and it was destined. It was my destined path. And I kind of knew that as a young child, you know, I met my high priestess in my early 20s. Um, it was like a dream come true for me. And, you know, she loved me unconditionally like family. And it was the first person that wasn't blood that really loved me like that. Um, yeah. It was a beautiful thing. Not everybody has those experiences in a group. You know what I mean? But I right. did. I had a beautiful, beautiful experience with the coven. Um, and she was very powerful. She's crossed over now, but she's always with me. I feel her with me all the time. Every time I have a mediumship reading too, 
um, because my real mother, my biological mother passed away when I was 20. And then I met my high priestess. So I always called her like my second mother. Um, but it's funny, my my real mom never comes through. It's always my high priestess that comes through in all the media meetings that I do. So um, so yeah, she's always she's definitely always with me and and taught me you know a lot about the religion and the craft and just a sweet powerful woman that I I do miss in the physical, but she is with yeah. me like I said. So. But you always feel her, yeah. And that's that's the thing. I mean, I I think I've got probably the strongest connection as far as you know, to those who've passed over, <clears throat> probably my grandmother on my dad's side, that would probably be the one that I'm most connected to. But yeah, yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter. You don't have to be blood. It's just who you, whoever you uh, really kind of gravitate to, whoever you, you know, seem to soak in the most knowledge from, whoever you resonate with. And right. uh, right. you no, know, that's, that's really cool. I, I don't know much about Wiccan. I mean, I know a little bit as far yeah. as, you know, they're really into nature and taking care of, you know, taking care of the earth and uh you know i mean i know there's plenty of things that can be done with a bad intention you know i know that some spells can be done with bad intention and and, and good intention it just depends on the person right i mean there are good witches and bad witches so let's face it yeah. they're just like there are good people and bad people good priests yeah. bad priests you know all walks of life um and when i was younger and i learned about wicca Wicca and witch were the same, one and the same to me. Whereas now people are pulling apart those definitions and saying, I'm a witch, I'm not a Wiccan. And I get that. But to me back then it was, if you were a Wiccan, you were a witch and they were one and the same. They both mean wise one, right? So um, to me, that person that just practices magic, if you will, that they would have been more of a sorcerer or, you know, someone that went to high magic or someone that just did spell work um, and didn't practice a religion. But, you know, it's, it's a little different nowadays. And I've had heated discussions about it, but you know, <laughs> to me, they're one and the same. That's, that's just, that's, my I mean, idea. that's what I always thought of it. And it, it, it really, it connects to all of the esoteric wisdom and paganism. Right. I mean, these are very ancient practices, you know, and, uh, I mean, I would say I don't I don't know the history of Wiccan, you know, but I would say it at least goes back to I, I would say it goes back to the time of the Druids. Yeah, I mean, probably, you know, Neolithic. Right. And and yeah. the oldest statue was Venus of, of Willendorf. Right. So, you know, that big busted, you know, she's she looks like she's pregnant or she's got a big belly and, and she's a full figured statue and. And that was the first one found that kind of was goddess, right? So um, I have a necklace actually of her that I wear quite a bit. And my high priestess had that. I used to call her that because she looked like that. Um, mm -hmm. And so, I mean, Wicca is, you know, God and goddess. For me, it's God and goddess. Some denominations of Wicca are just goddess. Um, I would imagine some are just God. But for me, it's all about duality and the balance of right. male, female, you know, good and bad, even, you know, that yeah. duality. Um, yeah. And my practice is always, I try to do unto others as I would have done unto me. Um, I try my best to not get angry at people, <laughs> you know, yeah. um, I, I really do try because I know what intent can do. I, yes, I know right. what thoughts can do and words can do. And so I really try to be careful with what I say, what I do. I mean, I'm only human. I make mistakes. Right. Yeah, I yeah. get upset at things, but I try not to hold on to things that I get upset about. I let them go. Right. Um, so, I mean, it is about, you know, the four elements of nature along with your element that you have, which is spirit. And you combine those to kind of manifest and, and change things, you know, that you want to change either in your life or in the universe or, you know, right. the world, if you will. Um, and it really comes down to like different terminology to what you're explaining to me sounds like, yeah, like a shaman or a medicine man or, right. yeah, I mean, right. we're just maybe different techniques, different right. uh, ways of doing things, but really all in all, you're basically just using 
or utilizing that source energy and connecting to it fully. So you can Correct. use that for whatever. Like I don't do you do you ever practice any spell work or uh invocations or anything like that? I mean, it's a rare occasion these days, to be honest with you. Um, you know, I, I, I did quite a bit when I was younger. Now I'm at the point where I use mantras, to be honest with you. That's like the quickest way to make stuff happen. I think yeah. it's easier than doing a spell. And, you know, you can do it while you're driving your car. So yeah. if I had known about mantras and and I had more answers younger, when I was younger, about universal energy, I would have mm -hmm. done that a long time ago. Um, spell work takes longer to manifest, usually. Yeah. I mean, at least a few days, I think mantras, you can do a lot quicker, to be honest. And, um, you know, there's certain spell work that when you do it, especially candle magic, if, and I'm not just talking about lighting a candle, I'm talking about lighting a certain number of candles and moving them and placing them, and, you know, and maybe go out into the universe and you don't know what you're going to get. Once that magic gets sent out, what magic does is it breaks down, like if you say you want, the, you know, a new job, let's say, or that makes more money. Well, if you're the current in the current job, that's not going to really make you the more money you want to make, then you might lose your job after you right. do the spell because it's going to break down everything that's not working before it builds it back up. So right. when I do magic now, it's, it's, it's very, it's very selective. You know, it's, um, you know, I'm a lot older now, so. We're I calculating more. Yeah. I understand exactly yeah. what you're saying that because I do the same yeah. thing. <laughs> I don't just, you know, let, when you let your mind wander and you're, you're involved in this and you are connected to that. Yeah. You don't know what you're going to get back because you're not focused on your intention. You know, that's why I do the crystal grids. It gives me more of a focus. Right. And I think that's what spells do. They give you more. They, for one, they put you in that kind of realm, right. In that vibration. And in that vibration, I feel like carries a lot more power. You're a lot more open to your power. Um, right. So it's kind of setting the mood is what I see more, you know, and, and the intent that you're putting into it. You know, I believe, right. I believe in some cases, voodoo dolls have worked, you know, and, and right. with the right, with the right practitioner. Right. So, yeah. And, and that can work as healing too. I mean, that's, yeah. that's what I use it for. It's what you use it for. It's what Norma uses yeah. it for. And a lot of us, you know, out there on, on, on these lives that are doing, you know, a lot of healers out there working and, and that's what we're, what we're using it for, you know, in that abundance and bringing it to everybody. I think it's important when doing something like this, include everyone, you know, include everyone, yeah. not just yourself. Well, you know, the whole importance of ritual is to shut down that logical side of your brain so that you yeah. can tap into the intuitive side because it, you know, and that's what I do when I'm shuffling cards Mm -hmm. my, that's where my psychic tuning in comes in when I'm doing tarot readings and shuffling cards. It shuts down that that logical side of my brain so I can access that psychic intuitive side. So same thing with ritual, doing magic and you know, sending that out into the universe. So, so and yeah, you're a, you're I, a medium and as well, well, right? Huh? You said you're a medium, so you're using that work doing that work as well. Well, I mean, I I don't really call myself a medium i am a psychic intuitive and i'm clairvoyant i do yeah. sometimes get messages from someone who's crossed over um but i ha i that ability opened up at a very young age for me and i got scared and i shut it down <laughs> so i don't really tap into that very much i like my beauty sleep i don't yeah. like to be woken up in the middle of the night and I have talked with other mediums recently that said, look, you can control that because it had just started for me. So I got scared and just shut it down. But I, I think it, I am looking into maybe developing that more um, and going into that realm a little bit more with mediumship, because I do know some very successful mediums that said they would show me and teach me. So <coughs> that's something I'm yeah, looking to develop more this year. Yeah. It's yeah. probably my most challenging of all, of all the things that I do as far as, uh, it's kind of work and connecting to other realms and dimensions and, and other dimensional beings. Yeah. It's, uh, it's probably the most, most challenging because a lot, you know, you want to give somebody something substantial that you can get, 
you know, and you, and they usually give you that. And I think, uh, you know, it's, it's hard to trust yourself. I think at first, just like with any of it, right. When you're, when you're really doing it, it's hard to really trust those messages coming through. Right. Well, I notice spirit repeats things. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yep. So they're direct, meaning they don't repeat. And I feel like it's coming directly from like a really high source, like maybe angelic or God. And then there are other messages that the, the, they repeat. And I know those are right. from spirit guides and from spirit. And so I can kind of tell who's legit and who isn't by the when they repeat something over and over. I'm like, oh, they're they're getting those messages. And I know and that's kind of like a sign to people that are watching, like if they think someone's a quack or not. If they repeat things a few times, the same sentence over like two or three times, then that's because yeah. spirits repeating that and saying yeah. that. Yeah, I know yeah, how that feels. Too, right? I've gotten stuck. You on keep those saying a few you times get times stuck saying like, the same thing over and over again. Yeah. I know it's yeah. it's almost like uh, I almost feel like sometimes it's it's about like God. Can you keep telling this person this so they hear it? <laughs> yeah. Because right. I've been right. telling they that it because they want you to hear it. And they're not listening. You say, yeah, and then you wind right. up repeating it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, it's funny, but I do. I am very eclectic. I do use, you know, my father is Hindu, so and I, my mom was Catholic. My biological mom, I was raised a Catholic, so I do kind of incorporate other personal, yeah. personal elements. Yeah, and shamanism. I'm Native American, so you know, I I incorporate some of that too, and whatever works. I'm very eclectic and. You know, I'm very open. I feel all roads lead to Rome. I, I feel yeah. like yeah. God God giving us free will um, would never say you can only practice this one religion this right. way. Right. It doesn't right. make sense. It doesn't it doesn't it doesn't gel that. in my head. If I God is like the creator God. of all, then why is there all you know, there's there's all. It's the all. It's right. everything. Right. right. You know? And that's the dichotomy that's is exactly. to teach, is to learn from. Is to learn right. that pushing that pull, you know, yeah. that balance, that yin, that yang, and that's it's important. Right. It's it's important to keep that balance because we can sometimes get really rigid, and then sometimes we can get really just too lackadaisical about things, and we need right. to stay right in the middle, you know. And that's one example, but yeah, it's it's this is really cool. You, I'm yeah. I'm loving the show. I'm loving it's your good. information. Well, I've talked to you before. You. And uh, you're doing great. And yeah. you you have a you have a documentary yes, where you're working say. on a series. Oh my god, I'm getting chills. <laughs> yeah. So I'm really nervous, but I'm really excited because we're going into production June 17th, June 18th, because we fly out June 17th to the UK. So it's called Witch's Journey, um, and it's a film about a witch who travels to the UK with her son, who is also a witch in training. And hence the name Witch's Journey. And we travel throughout the UK, meaning we start in England, then we go to Scotland, then we go to Ireland. Wow. Um, so to create an Oracle deck, that's going to be like a Celtic looking oh, Oracle wow. deck. Um, and the, the base of it started to create the Oracle deck, but it's kind of morphed into something else. So we are going to be creating the Oracle deck, but the idea is to also kind of help heal the planet. We're going to be going to all these sacred sites so we could send out some intentions. We're going to be planning on doing that to kind of raise planetary vibrations for healing um, and to help awaken people that, that need that awakening because I was recently awakened last year and it's a beautiful thing. I mean, you have any anger or baggage or past hurts affecting you anymore and feeling like that pure bliss feeling you know what that i mean rebirth. Yeah, yeah it's it's just you look at life totally differently and you feel connected to everyone and everything and all of a sudden you know things that bother you before don't bother you anymore and you handle situations much more calmly and diffuse situations that need to be diffused and it's just pretty and, and then you recognize anger in other people that you didn't see that before when you get to that point you know oh that's yeah. a really angry person but you don't get angry because they're angry you feel bad for them almost so yeah. um you and you want to help them you know move forward um yeah. so so i will be meeting up with my mentor over there his name is uh christopher j smith he is amazing he helped me awaken last year um i went to a retreat in vermont 
I actually um, met him, uh, met up with him there and um, spent a few days with him. And he's now like my best friend. So mm -hmm. um, we're going over to meet him. He lives over there in the UK. Um, my director is also over there in the UK. And so we'll be traveling around the four of us. Sacred's filming it while we go through the process of creating this Oracle deck. Um, it's going to be kind of the documentary. It's going to be kind of like um, it's going to be a documentary about the Oracle deck, but it's also going to be kind of like a tool that you can use to open yourself up to right. use the Oracle deck. So Chris is really good at guided meditation. So he's going to be guiding us through meditations at a lot of these sites. And you'll be able to sit, not only just watch the movie, but you'll be able to sit there and do the guided meditations with us right. to help open yourself up. So we're hoping that not only does it raise planetary vibrations, but the people that watch the movie can kind of open themselves up and maybe um, become, you know, more spiritual, become more psychic and intuitive right. and tap into those um, energies as well. And so that's kind of the, the plan um, for the film and we end production mid July and then we go into post-production with the editing and, um, and stuff like that. So that sounds yeah. like a lot of fun. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Some of the sites we're hitting up are Stonehenge. We're going, we're going to be at Stonehenge for summer solstice. So that's going to be a little crazy, okay. but, uh, we probably, probably, we don't know if we're going to be able to meditate there that day, but right. we're definitely going to get some footage there. And then a very circle, um, Chalice Well, Glastonbury Tour, um, Cliffs, we're going to Ireland, Cliffs of War, and um, the um, Giants Causeway. I'm also going to Trinity Library College to see the Book of Kells, and we want to take, so so I planned out, some of the sites are, are Neolithic, right, um, sites, and they're very ancient yep. stone circle sites, but we're visiting some, you know, a labyrinth, we're visiting um Callanish stones which is in the Isle of Lewis in Scotland and that's kind of in the shape of a Celtic cross so it's a stone Celtic cross which is pretty neat um so some of the sites are unique and different but we're also hitting up some some you know sites that are just national landmarks if you will um beauties of nature and yeah. we're also hitting up some some architectural landmarks like Trinity College, um, Roslyn Chapel uh, is going to be one of the places. Um, so so in order to kind of create a card, because I've kind of mapped out what cards I want and right. what, and, and so we meditate at the site to get the meaning of the, the true meaning of the card, but there are some cards that are coming to me. The meanings are coming to me ahead of time as I mm -hmm. work on the project. So like Trinity College is one of them that um, came to me ahead of time. And that's going to be like the Trinity College Library is going to be a card. And that's going to mean like the Akashic Book of Records and knowledge. So wow. that that's the meaning of that card, for example. That's awesome. um, so, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm getting some of that ahead of time. But the whole goal of Chris guiding me through the meditation is to kind of tap into what energy is there and let the site tell me what it means. Right. And I yeah, feel like right. that's what's going to happen. Yeah. I, I have a feeling that uh, you're going to get over there and you're going to have some surprises. And I think you're already expecting that anyway. Well, <laughs> you know, I'm kind of hoping I get some real magic on film. That's what I'm kind of hoping to accomplish. Yes. I mean, I mean, it happens to me all the time, you know, right. I, I just have never captured it myself yeah. but my children can tell you all kinds of stories. Uh, <laughs> and you know, and that's, that's the thing is I, like, I'll get, like I, we see a lot of stuff in the sky around here, right? So, okay. but it's hard. Like, I don't want to look through my phone to look at this thing I've seen only once right. that I can't explain, right? right? So I don't want right. to take the. And you know, when you get your phone out there, your phone doesn't doesn't zoom in as good as your eyes do. Right. So you want to look at it. You want to enjoy it, right? You want to enjoy the moment. That's right. what I usually end up doing. You know, I, I think it's it's hard to capture something. I'm like, man, you really got to be waiting for that to capture that because I. I would rather just view it and I'll try to capture one, but yeah, I see all kinds of strange stuff in the sky out here. Yeah. yeah that's cool. Like UFOs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Which yeah. I consider magic. Yep. In a sense. It's yeah. kind of fourth I mean, dimensional energy. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, definitely supernatural. So you have a so, you, yeah. you have a, a website that people can find you on? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to I cut do. you off. No, that's okay. So www.witches with an es journey.com is the movie website. Um, and then Dragon's Labyrinth is my, you know, shop, my online shop where you can get readings for me or buy product. I make candles, I make soaps. Um, I, I make stuff. So, and I make witches flying ointment, which is really good. Um, and that is www.dragonslabyrinth.com. Awesome. We'll awesome. Have to make sure we get those. And you're, you're very highly intelligent. I've talked to you a couple of different times. And, Thank uh, you. Yeah, you are too. <laughs> don't, don't ever <laughs> underestimate Maya. Cause she's, she's got, she's got a lot within her, <laughs> a lot of knowledge. And uh, yeah, I just feel I didn't mean to cut you off. We can. I just wanted to plug your sites for a second, so I wouldn't forget. Hopefully, I remember to do it later (laughs) too before we. I can. I can write it. I guess on. Can I? Oh yeah, yeah. If you can have, and and maybe somebody, one of our moderators, I think Tammy's in here, uh, can write it down. That would be awesome. But uh, yeah, if you can have your uh, somebody on your side write it down, or just put it in the comments. And then okay. I'll put it. I'll. I'm gonna put your name and, and tag everything on the video when I take okay. it to YouTube tomorrow. So, but yeah. Uh, so this this sounds like a really fun adventure. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Or adventures. Yeah. It, it's it's a big. Well, we have we have like 31 sites on on the list, which is a lot. You know. Right. Um. So we're some of the sites we're gonna hit up a couple. You know, like in the same day. But I'm only going to be there for three weeks, so it's going to be it's going to be a lot yeah. of work, you know. It's yes. just like a vacation yeah. time, you know. We're making right. a film, and um, I purchased a drone for the film too that does 4K oh, video. Awesome. And so on the Witch's Journey page, there is some drone test video, so you can kind of get a feel for that. And um, it's it's going to be great. I'm so excited oh, about the drone. I'm excited too. So, yeah, I'm excited for you. Yeah. I can't wait to see the movie. Thank you. Yeah. So the, the goal for the movie is to have it finished by the end of this year. It will be um, entered into, you know, the um, film festival circuit. Um, my director is an award winning director. He's, he's won awards for his, his short films and um, he, he's done film for a long time. That is his full time thing. And, um, and he's great. And he is also very much tied in with the esoteric um so he was a perfect it's weird how everything kind of just falls together yeah yeah Yeah, like it was destined or meant to be you know yeah so and um and so the film should be finished by the end of the year as a goal along with the deck we are going to be selling the film with the deck so like instead of getting a deck with a book you're going to get a deck with the auto the the documentary and um you'll probably get a little booklet you know also with the deck but mostly you know it's going to be the documentary to kind of help you open up to use the cards right. and um yeah and experience that um that journey with us that's the whole goal of that so yeah i want i want to have you back on after oh, yeah. you've after you've released it i'd love to have you back on oh cool yeah. cool yeah well maybe we can invite you to the um you know to the film release party. That would be, be very awesome. cool. <laughs> to the premiere. The premiere. Yes. <laughs> That'd be way cool. It's, it is exciting. And I'm, I'm very, it's, it started out to be very small, like I said, and it's kind of grown. Um, and it seems like it's, it continues to grow. So I'm, I'm not sure where, how far it's going to go, but I'm hoping that it reaches a lot of people because I think they're going to really like it, you know? Yeah. 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 Oh, it's oh, going to yeah. be, I think it's going to go really well. I think yeah. you're going to do really well. Yeah. I thank think so you. too. I think thank so you. too. Well, thank you, Maya, for being on. Did you have any questions for her? Or? Uh, she pretty much answered them all. And I'm, I'm excited now for the movie. Anybody I, I in the, uh, see let's see if, the, let's see if the uh, viewers have any questions. Okay. So just, uh, we can wait and just don't, we can keep talking. And as uh yeah, you ask her a question. Yeah. I've been asking, <laughs> I've been hogging all the airtime. <laughs> Well, you know, um, I don't know. I guess basically I, I, I do kind of wonder, um, as opposed to just calling yourself um, 
a witch, like some people. I call myself a mystic. I haven't gone to schooling or practiced any particular religion. Religion. So my question would be, why would you choose to, or what made you choose like the religious side of things, the Wicca, as opposed to just saying, I'm a witch, learning it and doing it? Um, I think it had something to do with my really powerful belief in God and all aspects of God and goddess. And then um, when I met my, I was already studying Wicca and like reading Scott Cunningham before I met my high priestess um, and already considered myself Wiccan at, at a right. very young age. We're talking like teenager age. Um, so I was already reading about it and I just was afraid to kind of cast circle on my own. So it's a good thing I met her because I probably would have never cast circle. You know, yeah. I was afraid to do anything. I was like cautious. I didn't know about enough about it. And I felt like I couldn't really practice it unless I was taught, you know, officially instead of looking in a book. And so I was kind right. of glad, but um, she was Celtic Wiccan and, and initiated a third degree. And so um, when I joined her coven and then she initiated me, um, she taught me, you know, how to cast circle and I just continued on with it. And I consider that kind of a foundation for my belief systems because, you know, Wicca is my foundation, but I, like I said, I'm very eclectic. I believe in a lot of different right. things. Right. right. I'm not your average witch or Wiccan, if you, if you will, because right. I do... I have recently encountered Christ energy. And I think, you know, Aaron, you and I talked about that, this Christ energy and um, yeah. it's really powerful stuff. And I had not encountered that before. Um, let's say, you know, a year ago, I've all, all of a sudden encountering this Christ energy. And all of a sudden I found myself kind of obsessed with Jesus. <laughs> like, so yeah. I mean, and that's kind of unique for a Wiccan to kind of right, right. be that way. Um, but I always kind of felt like Jesus might have been like a mystic like yourself and and um, and had, you know, mystical practices. So, you know, it didn't really come to a huge surprise. But like I said, it, it was a little bit of a surprise for me. But I'm very open to whatever anyone's beliefs are. When I was very young, I had a best friend who was who was um, Jewish, and she took me to Purim, and I came home and I told my mom that I wanted to convert <laughs> from Catholicism. <laughs> I, and she was like, "Why?" I said, "Because they have a lot of fun." And I had just gone to Purim, <laughs> you know. So. You know, I'm very open to everybody's kind of belief system. And, you know, I don't judge anyone for what they believe. And um, I think right. that's why the religion itself was what drew me in was because of my connection with God um, and, and, you know, God, the creator and aspects of God, the creator, right. which are the gods and the goddesses. So um, I think that's why I chose a religion because I, like, like I, like I told you earlier, I could have just been a witch. Like people are saying now, right, and just right, yeah. practice magic. But for me, it's not really about me kind of just practicing magic. I do love magic. I love it. It's, it's my, my high priestess used to call me her magical girl, the magical girl, because I was always <laughs> like wanting to do something. Um, but uh, for me, magic now is more about creating. Um, right. Yeah than than doing spells it's more about just creating and like this film it's about it's a, it's a creation of right. magic to me and so yeah. Oh, yes. you know, yeah. it's a spell yeah. within itself it's it's yeah anything creating that's that's adding to the collective consciousness right. that's anything you know so right that's awesome well thank yeah. you very much for being on i really You're enjoyed welcome. having you oh, i yes. really learned a lot and can't wait till you come and back, uh yeah. we don't have many viewers on tonight but that's okay. I don't see any questions. Let's see here. No, no, no questions yet. So no questions. Okay. <clears throat> anyway, thank you very much, Maya. Thank we'll you, talk Aaron. To you soon. I appreciate thank it. And enjoy your uh, trip. If I don't talk to you before that. Thank you. We uh, will be having a blog. So if anybody that watches this is interested in finding out what's going on, if you follow, which is journey, um, on Facebook, then, um, we will have a vlog, a daily vlog that we put on there on that and the YouTube channel, which is also called awesome. Witch's Journey. Okay. So. Awesome. 
Very good. Very good. Yes, well, we'll okay. get all those sites let's, put in Let's there go ahead and say your, uh, your website again. Just so people can... www.witchesjourney.com and then www.dragonslabyrinth.com. Dragonslabyrinth. Awesome. Well, thank you all for being here. Yes, thank you, Maya. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Had a great time. You guys have a great night. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Yes. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.